This is a preview of our two-day art and antique sale next Wednesday, um, the 21st and 22nd of August. So we're just going to have a quick look around the sale room and I'll point out some of the things that I think are quite interesting. I don't know about interesting, but this is massive. A uh, cast iron urn, just one of these, but what a huge thing. It actually goes on this pedestal behind here, which is another two foot six high. So and we, it's actually so heavy. Lift it off the floor to put it on the base. So once it's on here, it will come up to about here. So it's a massive urn there. If you've got somewhere in the garden to stand that, that's a magnificent thing. The estimate on that is about 800 to 1200 pounds, something like that. And you'd need a crane to fit that back on. Right next to it, looking along the furniture section of the sale, here's a few nice um, Georgian and Jacobean pieces of furniture here. It's a lovely small size Georgian chest of drawers there. On top of it is this, which is a very rare item. This is a 19th century um, two-day marine chronometer, which are essential navigation items on board a ship. So this one is by Lily and Son. Um, it has, um, this is the original brass and mahogany case. I'll just show you the outside. A different quality case there. So you've got a glass window there so you don't actually have to open it to to see the dial inside and these were used as navigational instruments to establish the uh, the longitude position of the ship that you're on so they and this they're the most important navigational item on board ship so quite a lot of these ships carried um, two or three marine chronometers so that you could establish exactly where you are in the world and you can establish the uh, the latitude from the angle of the sun in the sky but the longitude you need to know exactly the time of where you are and and where and the time at Greenwich which is on zero so this has a history to it it has a serial number here 1080 on its original plaque and that when you look back through the records that tells us that this was on board the cable ship Mackay Bennett from 1895 the year it was um, made um, and the Mackay Bennett also has an interesting history to it in that it was used when the Titanic went down. The Mackay Bennett was one of the four or five ships that was used to go over the area to try and locate a lot of the dead bodies. So this was the navigational instrument that was used in that process. So what an amazing thing. They're very sought after things as it is, but this one with a history, um, it's a difficult thing to value, but it, we're, we're thinking two and a half, three, three and a half thousand, something like that. But what a beautiful item just to own a precision um, scientific instrument like that. I really like that. Um, so that is on Wednesday's sale in the clock section. And that's the one there. And then next to it, we've got this clock here, which is a Victorian, very Gothic looking bracket clock. And there's the bracket that it sits on, which is the original very stylish thing that as well. It's sort of three to five hundred pounds estimate on that, but that's a very um, elaborate looking thing. This is interesting behind it. Um, now these, I usually expect this sort of box to be about this big, but being such a large scale, it's Japanese about 1900, maybe late 19th century, early 20th. Um, it's gilded and lacquered. Look at these, all these gilded seashells that are raised out of the decoration here. I'll just lift the lid up. It's in nice condition. And uh, these all lift apart. It's really smart, I like that. And the decoration goes all the way around. Estimates on that, two to, two to three hundred, something like that, but could, could make quite a lot more, that one. Uh, we will carry on down here. Just have a quick look along the row as we go. Weapons and Louis Vuitton um, bag there. We've got Jimmy Choo, Gucci. Lots of silk scarves this time. Quite a few um, old 
die cast and tin plate toys in this time, mainly in little groups. These are all Shuko um, clockwork racing cars down here, they're in very nice condition. Um, look at that little dinky lawnmower, it's original box and it works as well, look at that. That's absolutely good as new condition. So those three are all in one group there. We have submarines and boats and more ships. A model of Tower Bridge with a little destroyer that goes underneath it. It's quite smart. And what else? Some good looking clocks here. This is beautiful. This is a 19th century, uh, probably German um, porcelain this plaque here it's hand painted and beautiful it's extremely finely painted this one um, we've had a look at the back of the plaque and can't find any identifying marks that tell us exactly the factory that it was from but original frame a little bit of damage here to the gesso which just needs restoring and cleaning but apart from that it's completely original it's a lovely thing it should be sort of somewhere between 500 and a thousand pounds for that one Next to it, we've got these clocks here. This is a, a, an early electric clock, and this is a tavern clock. And then down here, we've got a Chinese bronze um, incense burner on its original stand. A good large size one. Don't usually see them that sort of size, and it's quite quite weighty as well. And it's got all the impress marks underneath it. Pretty good. And what else have we got? Um, let's carry on down the front here. Let's have a look in these cabinets. Lots of clocks this time. And this is nice. There's several pieces of this WMF, which is Württemberg Metal Fabric. So this is one of their items, which is a very stylish um, electro plate um, ornament there of a dancer. That's rather nice. Should be 150 or so. That's WMF as well, same factory. And we've got a very nice table lamp as well, that's WMF this time. Uh, I'll come back here in a minute. A collection of Moorcroft pottery this time. So this is all, all Moorcroft in here. This piece in the centre is one of the rarest patterns. Just that one there, moonlit tree. It's quite, quite a rare thing, and these are Florian Ware, James McIntyre, all still connected with Moorcroft. And then here we have two paintings by Fred Cuming, who's a local artist to us, but one of the most important British landscape artists of the 20th century. And uh, he, as I said, lives near here. This is a scene at Hythe, this oil painting here. And the estimate on that's going to be eight to 1200. And that's by Fred Cuming as well. That's going to be at least six to eight hundred. And then we have a whole collection of Russian art this time. Some large pictures over here. There's Lenin on the wall there. And all these underneath it are Russian as well. All again from a local collector. So, what else have we got? I'm just going to, I think we'll change over now and I'll just get Will to show you some of the watches and the silver and the jewellery that uh, are in Wednesday's sale as well. Thank you. Right, welcome back to uh, the second section of our preview for this sale, uh, which will be going through just a few of the standout watches, a few of the bits of jewellery, and then finally we'll have a look at a few pieces of standout silver as well, because um, there are quite a few in this sale. So we'll start off with the watches, uh, namely the two of these on the black pad. Um, so we're starting off the watch section with uh, this lot here, lot 300, which is a Breitling Navi Timer, which is a chronomatic um, Navi Timer here. So it's one of their first models of the um, chronomatic series, which came out in uh, the end of the 1960s. Uh, this will be sort of mid to late 90, uh, 1970s. Um, it's not on its original strap, but it's in extremely good condition overall. Just needs a bit of a polish. It's working, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, um, it's in to sell, it's in for one to 2,000. And it's an automatic wristwatch as well. So no need to wind that one every single day. <laughs> uh, the other one here, 304, quite blatant through from the, um, the box. 
This is a 14 karat gold Rolex with a lovely brushed blue dial there. Um, this one is, I think, late 1950s, which is quite an early model um, for this, this sort of Rolex. But um, it, again, it's, it's one that's really in to sell. It's, it's in at 1,500 to 2,500. Um, very well kept again. I think it just needs a, a new spring bar as the other one's corroded, but it's, um, it's the exact name you want and it's in 14 karat gold. Uh, a few of the bits of jewellery here. Again, along the front, dazzling diamonds. This, this one's lot 380, which is a lovely platinum and diamond eternity ring. So the diamond's going all the way round the band. There's definitely going to be several carats worth of diamonds there, probably over four carats worth. Would have thought in that. And another one right next to it here, 382. Not quite as fashionable as the, the Eternity Ring, but um, still some very good quality diamonds in there. And a large central old mine cut diamond with very few inclusions. An extremely good quality ring there. And that should be around 800 to 1000 I would have thought. Several other things here. Going to the 1970s style, the naturalistic style ring. This is um, typical of that era. Um, plenty of London jewellers making this sort of ring around that period. Sadly, no, no maker's marks on this one, but um, could well just be rubbed off. Let's see if someone can identify that one. And a few other nice rings on that pad as well. And then just to switch these around, I've got some nice um, Victorian and Georgian jewellery in this sale. Um, and a lot of these um, old pieces of jewellery tended to have meanings to them. So, just as an example, this one over here, the heart-shaped locket, this is called a regard locket. So the reason for that is because the stones here, the first letter of each stone spells out regard. So we've got ruby, emerald, amethyst, and so on. But it's, um, it was a typical engagement piece of jewellery. They seem to have um, transpired into rings nowadays, but um, used to be given in small tokens like that. Which is quite sweet, and it's very good condition again. It's extremely bright gold. And another piece of Georgian silver jewellery. So they're just paste stones in here. But a very flashy piece there. And that's from the Belle Epoque period in France. With the opals and diamonds. And all sorts of other things in here. A large aquamarine pendant. With lovely white enamel ribbons on the side. So quite a few nice pieces of um, watches and jewellery in here. Uh, there are definitely a lot, there's definitely a lot more to look at in the silver though. Um, and the first few lots in the sale are well worth a look for these. I'll just open up both of these doors here. Um, so one of the first lots in the silver is this small vase here. Um, and the reason why it's so important um, is for the maker. So the silversmith that made this, um, or the silversmiths I should say, are Omar, um, Omar Ramsden, and Alwyn Carr, and they were very important arts and crafts silversmiths at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, they started their silversmithing at the, right at the end of the, the 19th century, and this is um, dated as 1905, so it's a very early model of theirs. Most of the others of this sort are around the 1920s, so quite a, quite a while later. So that could do quite well. Aiming for something around 800 to 1,000, but could surprise us and make a bit more. Got various tea caddies in this sale as well. Lots of silver tea caddies. There's one there. There's one down there as well. Very collectible things. Some of them are extremely elaborate. But they're beautiful things. And we've got more cigarette boxes, 
trinket boxes and a massive German silver box there with a hinged lid. And a few silver tea sets as well. This one's probably Indian or Burmese silver. And then an extremely good quality Victorian uh, four piece tea set there. Tea and coffee set with gilded interiors to the, to the sugar bowl. Beautiful quality that one. That should, that should make more, more than a thousand hopefully. But plenty to look at. There's, it's a really exciting part of the sale. Um, but there's lots to look at all the way through. Please do look online, it's the best way of viewing at the sale because uh, you can look through our tiled images um, which it's by far and away the best way to look at the sale. So please do. Uh, the viewing is on Monday from 9 till 5, Tuesday from 9 till 7 and then the antique sale is on Wednesday and that starts at 10am, goes on all day and then the pictures are on the Thursday and when they start at 11 o'clock. So please do have a look through, let us know what you think and thank you very much, we'll see you there.